Hey, Ecom Masters, welcome to the show. My name is Mike Weiss, Chief Community Officer at Dropified, and as a thank you for tuning in to the e-commerce mastery show, we've put together a special podcast-only e-commerce training just for you. Now, in it, you're going to learn the ins and outs of how to set up your own brand of products where you can literally put your own labels, brands, logos, and messaging over top of top selling, in demand, high quality, high profit products that are exclusive to supplements, CBD, skincare, and pet products. And here's the key no minimum order quantities, no upfront inventory costs. And I'm going to show you how to do this in literally minutes. Now, guys, we refine these principles over the course of five years with working with over a hundred thousand of our own e compreneur customers just like you so to get immediate 100 percent free access all you got to do is go to dropify.com forward slash podcast dash special or you can just click the link below and you're going to learn exactly how we do this in just minutes thank you so much for being part of the dropify family and enjoy the show Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of e-commerce mastery. I'm your host, Ben Gothard, and today we have an extra special gentleman here by the name of George Bryant, who is in fact a New York Times best selling author. Not only that, he is going to blow your mind with his seven laws of marketing. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with George's work yet, which you should be, um, one of the key elements here that we're going to be talking about is how relationships beat algorithms. In the world of algorithms, let's kick their ass with relationships. Let's do it. George, you're the man. Thank you for your time. Welcome to the show. I am so honored to be here. Thank you for having me and for everybody listening. Thank you for lending me your ear for a little while. My intention is to give you everything you need to blow your mind and uh, hopefully make a mastery of your marketing, your customer journeys, and your relationships inside of your business. So I'm excited to get into this, man. Right on. Let's get into it right away. I would love to hear your story. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I'll give you, you don't have a four and a half hour podcast. So we're going to do the, we're going to do the elevator version. This is going to feel like fast forward in real life, except I'm going to talk at normal speed, but it's probably in 25x right now. So I came, uh, I grew up in Massachusetts uh, in the US and uh, I had a pretty rough childhood, drug abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. I was the only white kid in my class, was bullied, nose broken three times, teeth knocked out four times, social services, emancipation, hospitalization. So I did what any kid would do that didn't want to end up in an addict. I ran away and joined the Marine Corps, right? Because that was a smart thing to do, go from broken to broken, but they rewarded me for being broken, which was a good thing to have. So I ended up in the United States Marine Corps on active duty for 12 years of my life. Um, went to boot camp, combat training, school, became the honor graduate, and ended up in Somalia in 2004 on my first deployment. Lovely 21st birthday, I almost lost my legs, ended up coming home, having six surgeries, spent 12 months in a wheelchair, got addicted to narcotics and pain pills, and gained 100 pounds. I was bulimic, spiraled out of control realized that my life was going nowhere and they said they were going to kick me out. And I was more afraid of going home like to nothing and getting out than I was of doing the work to fix it. So then I got newly addicted to working out, ended up doing an Ironman, made a full recovery, tied a world record for a standing box jump until I got into Afghanistan in 2010. In that deployment, I ended up getting seven concussions over the course of like two and a half years. And so after that one, I had bleeding on my brain, fluid on my brain. And they're like, hey, listen, it's been fun, but you're not really useful for us anymore. You're kind of beat up and broken. And I was like, well, you did this to me. Um, And so they said that they were going to medically separate me. And at the time, at the time, I didn't really want to be sick and tired anymore, but I didn't know what to do. I'd never cooked before. I was newly like into fitness and loving it. So I was like, I'm going to teach myself how to cook and I'm going to document the process. And so I started teaching myself paleo because I was celiac. And I was like, I'll just post on a Facebook page every day. This was like 2010. So I had to go make a fake college email account to get a Facebook account. Right. And I was doing it for accountability. Right. I didn't really care if people consumed it. I was like, if I post a recipe every day, I'll beat my bulimia. I'll cook my food. It'll hold me accountable. Well, after like four months, everyone's like, God, these recipes would be great if you had them in one place. I'm like, they are, they're on Facebook. And they're like, no, 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 like a blog. And I'm like, what's a blog? 
this was 2010. Like literally I had no idea what a blog was. I'd been an active duty Marine for 12 years. Like I didn't even know what Facebook was. Like I just don't even know. And so I was like, cool. And they're like, go to blogger.com. And I was like, cool. So I go to blogger.com. I set up an account and I transferred every, this is how old I am. On Facebook in 2010, I was using the notes section for recipes, right? So there were like 70 notes, right? One per day. And so I moved all the notes over, took some photos and basically launched a food blog and started just kept posting and posting. And I knew nothing. I'd never done digital marketing. I didn't even know what marketing was, right? And like I was posting for me and I posted consistently every day for like 18 months. And, you know, very quickly it went from my friends to who the hell are these strangers to why are you following me to what do you mean you want more stuff from me? I've never cooked before. And so it's kind of perfectly timed to where the Marine Corps is like, hey, you have three months left until we're retired and I don't get any retirement and this thing starts to take off. And so I'm like, oh, I should probably learn this. But I was broke, didn't know what I was doing. And so I did what anybody would do. I self-taught everything, web design, blogging, social media marketing, affiliate marketing, photography. And it was the ugliest thing ever. Like, I mean, like if you go to Wayback Machine and look, it's the most embarrassing website I could ever see. And like, I was so dumb at business and like this is a compliment to myself the website's name was civilized caveman cooking creations.com because that's really easy to spell and remember um fast forward 10 years it ended up just civilized caveman but yeah so i did that and then i basically posted recipes for about 18 months and then the marine corps was like hey you're done and somebody was like god george i just wish you had all these recipes in one place i'm like okay so i took like three days i saved them all in a word document and i sent it to them and they're like oh my god this is amazing but we were going to pay you. And I'm like, why would you pay me? And they're like, because it's convenient. I'm like, but they're all the same recipes on my website. And they're like, yeah, but you put them together for us. And they're like, you should charge money for this. I'm like, why? And they're like, because people pay. I'm like, how? And they're like, oh, upload it to this website called ClickBank. And I was like, okay. And so I uploaded and I was like, how much would you pay? And they're like $27. And so then I literally put it on ClickBank charged $27 and my email list was maybe like 800 people, but I was getting like at this point, 15,000 people a month on my website. So I just did one post. Hey guys, I put all the recipes in one place. They're the same ones on my website. So you don't have to pay for it, but if you want the convenience, here you go. And I made my yearly salary on day one, um, which was like $42,000. And I was like, okay, I don't care what's going to happen. I'll figure this out. And, uh, but I was so dumb. I didn't even know how to save it as a PDF. I uploaded a word document to ClickBank. Like I was literally selling in a word document as an affiliate offer. And so that was literally my foray into digital marketing, which was in 2011. And so that obviously kicked me into overdrive. I ended up doing, I ended up grossing over a million and a half dollars on that word document in like six months, only because I literally gave away free value and built relationships for 18 months like the quote unquote secret sauce. Right. And so then that led into, and someone's like, God, you know what? Like, I wish you had an app. And I'm like, what's an app, like an iPhone app. And like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. And like, yeah. And so I literally found out how, and I was like, they're like, you should take all these recipes in this ebook and put them in an app. And I was like, why would you pay twice? And they're like, well, cause I can bring my app to the store with me. So I literally made an app, launched the app the same way, hit number one in the world and got featured by Apple's the top health app of 2015. And literally what was mind blowing to me is these recipes were free on my website. Then they paid me to put them in an ebook and then they paid me again to put them in an app. And I was open about all of it. There was no sleaziness. There was no like, Oh, I'm tricking you. I'm like, no guys, they're all the same. And they just kept paying and paying and paying. And so then I ended up writing a real book. And then that became a 22 week New York times bestseller hit number four in the world, built a million fans organically had 6 million uniques a month, all with a food blog. And here's the secret. I hate cooking. I don't do it anymore um, because I was trying to hear my health. And so my whole role was document my journey, respond to every comment, show up every day for me, not them, and then help anybody who comes into my space. And it basically made me a multi seven figure business that built my entire career on digital marketing. And then about four years ago, I realized like I really didn't like cooking anymore and I didn't want to do it. So I gave the business away as a Christmas present to one of my mastermind students. And then somebody has been like, hey, you're not doing it anymore. Can you help us do what you did? Can you help us do what you did? And I'm like, what did I do? And they're like, no, you do things different. And so they asked me to come keynote an event on what I had done. I keynoted on like how to love your customers and three of these marketing laws. You're going to get seven of them today. And at the end of it, they're like, can I, can you help me? Can you help me? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, cool. How much can I pay? I'm like, why would you pay me? 
And they're like, because the, I'm like, wait, you're going to pay me and I don't have to do anything. I just have to talk. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, okay, I like this. And then my first client was actually men's health. My first ever consulting client was men's health, then women's health. And then that went on to title as Taylor made Adidas, Reebok, men's health on it, vital proteins, Aubrey Marcus, Jim quick. And the list goes on to 500 e-commerce companies that I've now helped $2 billion ones and the rest of them over seven, eight and nine figures, which then brings me to my point now, which is where I sit now, where my job is to help entrepreneurs succeed and build legacy businesses and ethically scale their businesses. Cause quite frankly, uh, I hate helping big companies because all they do is pay themselves more and treat their employees like <laughs> And so my job is to help everybody. And I mean, anybody, as long as you care about your customer and you're interested in having an impact on this planet, I will help you as much as I can to achieve your goals in business, marketing, mindset, you name it. And that brings me to today. <sighs> that was awesome. And that was 25 X speed. Oh man, you don't want the full one. You missed the... The, my father passing away from cancer, the marriage and divorce, the kicking, the addiction, all that stuff. But I like the, I like the elevator pitch. That's why I have a podcast. If you want the full story, you can go listen to that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah. can, uh, we, can yeah. we very quickly get the name of that podcast? Because oh, yeah. I'm yeah, sure yeah. people are going to want to go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Uh, my name, the name of my podcast, uh, very eloquently put, is The Mind of George Show at mindofgeorge.com because I tell everybody, they're like, oh, I wish I knew what you knew. I'm like, uh, I couldn't pay you enough money to be want to be plugged into my head, right? Like I tell people, I'm like, you remember in the matrix when they plugged the programming into Neo and he learned like so quick, I'm like all the code. I'm like, that's what my brain does like 85 times a second. And I was like, I feel like anybody else would just short circuit and explode because I don't even understand like how I live with what's in here. So instead I just launch a podcast so I can talk about it all day. And so, yeah, that's the 25X speed. Uh, which brings me to where I am today. And, and really, a lot of people ask me, like, why do I really do what I do? And the truth is, is that when I started this in 2010, I looked for people to learn from. I looked for help. And the only stuff that was out there was like, take money from people or do this or spam this or scam this. And all the good ones weren't online because they were out doing it, right? And all the ones online were out there to make a buck. And it was exhausting. Like, I it probably took me eight years to learn what could have taken me eight months if I had the right mentors and things like that. And I was like, entrepreneurs make this world go round. Like entrepreneurs keep this world going. Entrepreneurs help families. They employ people. They change people's lives and they do it in a manner that corporations and companies can't do. And I was like, we need more entrepreneurs. And I was like, but they also don't need to pay $5,000 to figure out if their keyword can rank on Amazon before they launch a darn product. And so I was like, okay, I was like, if there's nothing out there, then I guess I have to make it out there. And that was kind of what got me to this point today. Well, I am so glad that you did because now we can have this conversation and it's awesome. And I'm so, so, so excited. Now that we know where you've come from and what you've done and all the different companies that you've worked with and the companies you've built. By the way, such a cool perspective of not only building it yourself, but having consulted with some of the top players, that's mm -hmm. awesome. And that gives you that that gives you such interesting optics into this industry. I'm so, so excited to dive into these laws. So now I will be quiet and uh, I would love to hear these, these seven laws. Yeah. So and and I actually I think you nailed that. You're the first person that's ever interviewed me that's actually put those two together. And it's the reason I feel like I can empathize and understand both sides because as an influencer, right in the beginning, I know what it's like to work with companies. I also know what it's like to struggle and where our weaknesses is and how it's hard to maintain. But then in the business side, and now I own, you know, nine e-commerce companies. I also know what it's like to what we need from an influencer and how we work together and the partnerships there. And it's a really interesting perspective because I can sway to either side and understand, but I also feel like I speak both languages, which means that I'm not up here talking about transactions. Like I know what moves the needle for both and like how to feel seen, heard and respected, how to be a teammate, which I think when you think about it, what you're really doing is you're, you're developing a system or a process or a viewpoint that allows you to be solid so that you can empathize with your customers. Right. And at the end of the day, you know, the businesses that win and the businesses that succeed are the ones that understand your customers better than they understand themselves, right? I don't give a shit about how you understand yourself. If you're doing that, you're going to go out of business, right? When you market and you do business for your ego or you, 
it always smacks on your face, right? But when you can get to a point of like solid foundation, like this is who we serve, how we serve them, how they feel and all those different pieces, you're really, really set up to win. But in order to do that, you also have to understand the entire field that you're playing, right? And so I don't want you to get blindsided and sacked when you don't know what's coming just because you didn't take the time, which brings me to law number one. So just so everybody knows, I was telling Ben, I have never publicly shared all of these laws anywhere on a podcast, on a, anywhere. The only people that get them uh, is in my mastermind and I'm starting to pop them out on the podcast, but I've still never done a full episode of all of them. And so uh, there's seven marketing laws that like I live by, right? So I have a couple models that I use to build and scale companies, but these are the laws that it doesn't matter who you are, what business you're in, whether you're just getting started, whether you're already going, whether you're drop shipping, whether you're building an audience, it does not matter. If you apply all seven of these laws to everything that you do, your success is guaranteed. The only thing that you have to think about is how much time it will take. And that comes down to your level of clarity, intentionality, and discipline. And so law number one, law number one is very, very easy. Everybody feels valued whether they give you their credit card or not. Everybody feels valued whether they give you your credit card or not. And I'm going to give you some examples of this. So the first thing to remember is some statistics about marketing, right? Most people think marketing is digital marketing, television, commercials, right? You miss the whole game. That accounts for less than 14% of marketing. The other 86% of marketing is word of mouth marketing. When consumers and customers tell their friends about you, they wear your product, they drink your coffee, they talk to their girlfriends in the park with their Bob stroller on the weekend about their experience the other day, right? The average consumer gives eight to 10 brand recommendations or non-recommendations in a 60 second conversation without realizing it. And that is an important thing to understand because if you're not giving them ammunition to talk about you positively, there's only one thing they can do. And what are the things that people do on social media? What do they say when they've had a bad experience? What do they do when they haven't heard from a company? When you don't own that journey, they complain, right? And there's only five reasons that people share with anybody. Go through Facebook, go through Instagram right now, and I guarantee you every single post that you see will fit into one of these five buckets. Number one, humor. Number two, controversy. Number three, education. Number four, credibility. Number five, social status you will find nothing that doesn't fit into one of those five buckets, right? And so when you understand that every single time a customer interacts with your brand, it's a touch point and it's giving them either ammunition to talk about you negatively or positively, the goal is at every interaction to give them something of value or a positive experience so they can share about you in one of those five buckets, whether they pay or not. Now, when you think about a customer journey, and I'm fire hosing all of you right now. This is like a PhD in consumer psychology in 30 minutes. When you think about a customer journey three years ago, so back in 2017, I spent $5 million of somebody else's money to figure out how many touch points it took to get somebody from raising their hand to say, I want whey protein to spending $60 on a product. This was in 2017. It was 26 touch points, 26. Now, we're up in the hundreds of touch points, right? But yet everybody expects somebody to make the close right away. And so if you live in that transaction and they don't buy your product and then you remind them, oh, buy my product again, you're actually pushing them further away and not allowing their journey to happen, which means they don't feel valued whether they give you their credit card or not. And so not only is it about morals, ethics, and understanding the human on the other side, it's actually the best converting strategy that you can use everywhere in your business. You know what's crazy about that? The 26 touch point number. We just on the show spoke with John Benson, who mm-hmm. is like the godfather of, of uh, video sales letters, VSLs. Mm-hmm. And he said the key in his, that he's found in all of his years of marketing and email is to literally follow up with people. And the key number is 26 times. That is crazy that y'all both said the exact same number. And I have never talked to him in my life, ever, ever, which is so beautiful and it makes me so happy. My, my, my heart is very validated right now, right? And so when you think about that and you understand that now, if you focus on like everything that I do, if somebody comes to my website and they don't buy, how can I make that last interaction go from a no to a yes, right? Because psychologically, people that spend their money, like I'm going to buy 100, 100 leads 
because I'm going to convert four of them, figure out the LTV, and then buy a hundred more at that cost to get four more, doesn't realize that if I fast forward and I put a thousand of those people in a room and stand on stage and say, hey, how many of you like Ben? That only 40 hands go up. How many of you don't? 960. Which game do you want to play? Because it doesn't take a lot of effort to turn those no's to yeses, but human beings remember their last touch point, their last experience. And so if their last experience was saying no to you, guess what they're going to say about you when somebody else asks or when they get to the park or someone's like, hey, do you know a supplement? No, but I just went through this company. I was super excited. And all they did was remind me that I didn't buy and I just had a question. Game over. You just lost three customers instead of one. So it's really, really, really important to understand that game. So law number two is listen intently to what your customers want. Notice how I didn't say, tell your customers what you want to tell them. Nobody gives a shit about how <laughs> you think or feel. Your job is to listen 99% of the time and then regurgitate what they said so they feel seen, heard, and respected to feel safe enough to make a conversion. And I want to say that again. Your job is to listen so you have the copy, the words, and the content required to validate their feelings where they are so they can feel seen, heard, or respected, which allows them to feel safe to make a choice to buy your product. So practically, if we're, if we're doing this in our business, is this going to look like comments or is it going to yep. look like emails? Great question. Great question. So I teach this in one of my courses, my, my course from zero to 5 million, the Lighthouse Method course. I call it my ethical pirating, right? It's my spyglass method, right? And so you have customers, you have content, and you have competitors. And those are the three areas where you can crowdsource 99% of your marketing without spending a dollar, right? So my favorite thing to do is I don't do it. And if you own your business, the worst thing you can do is get on the phone with your customer because you are biased and you will lead the conversation because you have personal investment. So I will hire somebody or have somebody I know and I will give them eight to 10 questions and I will have them call my customers or people that said no and get me the unabashed truth verbatim. And the biggest key here is verbatim because a customer will say, oh, well, I didn't think I'd be able to develop a habit to take the product, right? You'll summarize it to you're not committed to taking it or you can't create this. And if you change the words, you speak French while well, they're speaking English. The key here is verbatim because that allows you to be in the heads and the hearts of the people that are reading it. Because the worst thing that happens in marketing is that when somebody reads what you post, they have to think. The job of marketing is to read what you post and feel. And so the reason that adage has been around for so long, talk like you're in eighth grade, talk like you're in eighth grade, isn't because you're trying to dumb things down or insult people's intelligence. It's because all it does is allow them to feel the feeling that is desired to take the action. And so I'll give you an example of a webinar we were doing. We we're running this webinar and the webinar was already converting to cold traffic at 6%. And it was an inflammation webinar. It was helping people get rid of pain and we're like massive pain, massive pain, and it converted. We surveyed a hundred of the people asked and we asked them specifically, how would you describe your pain? And like 20 people said bone crushing pain. We just changed the title of the webinar and the slides in the webinar to bone crushing and it went from 8% to 22% conversion on the same audience. All because they felt understood and it was their language. And so that is the reason of that law is that your job is to listen and regurgitate not to project out what you think, which then leads me to lesson number three. Law number three is learn or serve with every action you take. If everything you do in your business, then I mean everything, isn't helping you learn more about your team or about yourself, your team, or your customers, or serving what you learned, you're wasting nothing but time, money, and energy, and it's all for your ego. And so if you're going to post on social media, you need to be able to tell me that it is either serving a problem that was identified by your customer or you're gathering information to learn about what content to create to support your customer. Same thing with your team and same thing for yourself. And this is the one that's missed all the time. 
It's like, oh, I want to post my car. How does that car help me learn anything about your customer? Nothing. I don't give a shit what you drive. You could ride a donkey around for all I care. You told me you want to change people's lives. They don't care either. But then if you tell me that you sell automobile services or you have people interested in buying a car, you might want to post a picture of a Honda and then a Lexus and then a Mercedes to see which one people respond to to then serve that need, right? But everything you do has to be intentional. And if there's anything that's going up that's like, oh, I forgot to post today or I'm just going to post this because somebody else did, all you're doing is making it harder to build your business because you're pushing your customers further away because it's incongruent to the core of your brand and the message that you're trying to build. So law number three is everything you do has to be learning or serving your customers. And I focus on customers, but it also applies to yourself and your team, right? And I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say you have a team, you're all remote and you do a meeting every Tuesday, but every time you do a meeting, your team's energy just isn't there. Like you almost feel like they don't want to be doing the meeting, but yet you keep doing the freaking meeting for you. And then if you ask them, you just have to ask them, well, it's going, oh, I feel like they're, they're too long. We don't need to do them. They're all fluff and ego. Well, you learned something. So then you change the habit, right? If you go on social media and you post an image of something for your brand and it gets no likes and no comments, don't post the damn thing again or something like it. No feedback is feedback. Something was missing. The image was missing something. The caption was missing something. The audience wasn't the right audience. And so you have to learn both of what people are saying and what they're not saying through their actions, through their words, and through their responses to make adjustments to then further serve them, right? Email's my favorite one, like email sequences, right? Everyone's like, oh my God, like my third email, the open rate was down. I got to rewrite it. I'm like, the open rate was down, which just means only one of two things happened. The previous email sucked or your subject line sucked. Don't change anything in the email. Just change the wrapping paper, right? Make an adjustment, test it again. Make an adjustment, test it again, right? Like I actually just opened my email list this morning because I just launched a new email list of like a VIP invite only. And I've only had like 480 people go through it right now so far. My average open rate is 91% and my click-through rate is 63% with 500 people in a week. That's awesome. And all it is is paying attention. It's paying attention. And so you have to learn or serve with every action you take. Hi there, Ecom Masters. Mike Weeks here again with a friendly reminder that you've unlocked access to our exclusive podcast only training on how to create your own supplement, CBD, pet, or skincare brand in just minutes, where we're going to break down from A to Z exactly how to put your own design on top selling products and start selling in just minutes. It's incredible. Now the principles that you're going to learn are exactly the same principles that we've used with our customers who did over $2 billion. That's right. With a B $2 billion in sales last year alone, you cannot afford not to take me up on this free training. So to get immediate 100% complimentary access, all you got to do is go to dropfight.com forward slash podcast dash special, or you can just click the link below in the show notes. I will see you soon. So law number four before is, before we hop into there, I want to I want to slide in here and ask a quick question. Do you it, when you start working with with people in, in different businesses, when you're advising or when you're evaluating your own actions and, and your own businesses, do you do an audit of saying, let me go through absolutely every single piece of material that yep. goes out or is yep. is internally uh, sent out? and just yep. rip it all out that's, yep. that doesn't abide by that law? The first thing that I do of every single company, every mastermind student, everything is a current state. And really like the best analogy I give people is like using Google Maps or Apple Maps or Waze, right? Everybody is so keen to put in the destination because they want to get there somewhere different. But I challenge every one of you to open your phone, put in a destination and hit go without giving it a current location and see if it gets you there. You miss the most important part. You can't go somewhere unless you know where you are. And it is the most important and neglected part of all of this. And it's not personal. It's just a, hey, can we do better? Can we do better? But you have to know where you are to measure it or to change it. And so the first thing I do, every consulting, every intensive, every couching call, even when I do my events in person, people I know, we do current state in their business that day to start the event. 
because once you know where you are and then you know where you want to go, you just plot the path to get there. And so I run through all of these laws, right? And then it's like, hey, we did an auto. Oh, wait, where's that? Oh, we're not there yet. Okay, cool. And then you take that, you prioritize it, and you put in things and KPIs in place of like, oh, that's going to move the needle. The team has that capability. That's going to serve our customers. And then you prioritize from that point. And so current state, in my opinion, is one of the most neglected parts of marketing in general and business because everybody wants to go to the next shiny thing without realizing it's just a distraction from what would actually get them there, which all starts from knowing where you are. And quite frankly, the hardest part about knowing where you are is letting go of the ego, right? And like the shame and guilt. And like, listen, I screw up every day. I've, I have 8 million holes in my businesses, right? But where there are no holes and where is where I spend time with my customers, right? I might have efficiency holes and operational holes and cash flow holes, but I have zero holes when it comes to my customer relationships because that's where I go first. And then I'm like, okay, I'll do that later. Okay, we'll do that tomorrow. But current state is the most important one for sure. It's such a good question. So law number four is really easy. Build long-term relationships, not one night stands. Please stop going for the close on the first date. Give somebody time to court for you to get to know them, for them to get to know you, right? Like my favorite example, you sell physical products, you're a drop shipper, right? You might need to do lead generation, so you might make a lead magnet. If you offer some, a lead magnet and say, hey, I'm going to help you do blank in seven days, do not send them a PDF and two hours later sell them your damn product. You said seven days. Make it seven days. Deliver on what you promised. Allow them to court. Allow them to fall in love with you. Make them want the next thing because you're delivering the value. This is a long game. Companies that go for the transaction on the front all go out of business. Name me one billion dollar company that only has one customer or a one-time customer. Name me one company that's made a billion dollars that has never had a repeat buyer. Name me one company that's ever made $100 million without a repeat buyer. You can't. But yet what you think about and what you look at and what you consume, it's taught, oh, get your LTV up or get your AOV up, right? Get that front end, add more upsells, right? Without realizing that you're creating permanent damage. You're getting that extra $22 on the front and losing $220 on the back. All because you don't have patience. You have to play a game of chess. So think about is what I'm about to do going to help me build a long-term relationship or are they going to feel transacted upon? Are they going to feel taken from? Is this going to leave a bad taste in their mouth? Are they going to give me their credit card, but then their last experience was a no because I promised them I would deliver this and before the product got to them in the mail, I already told them to buy another one. That's a good way to commit you know, brand suicide. It happens all the time. So law number four is build long-term relationships, not one-night stands, which brings me to law number five. So create. I, go ahead. I know I keep interrupting you. No, go I, for it. But th there's so much gold here. I want to unpack a little bit too. Go for it. Let's do it. When you're talking about building that relationship and courting them, do you have some sort of process or a strategy that you follow to actually perform the courting? Like, do you hand a rose on day one and mm -hmm. then a violet on day two? Like, what does that process look like for you? How do you think about that? Yeah. So for me, uh, you know, I do, I teach all of this. And so I, I do it all the same, no matter what I do. And email is my primary like focus with everything. It's the core of every customer journey. And I have a specific process that I follow, but this is what I'll tell you to think about. If you were to think about the fact that like, let's say you took your product and you had your ideal client sitting in front of you, but had never heard about your product and never used your product. And they came up to you and said, what do I do? How do I use it? If you document that thought process of like, oh, they would need to know this. They would need to know this. Oh, don't do that. You would need to have this. Do this when. And you took each one and made it an email. That's your onboarding sequence. Game over. That's it. That's how simple it is. Now, of course, I put psychology into it. I put, you know, beliefs, escalations, habit creation, all those things, which is my magic sauce. But really, that's what it is. The mistake that most people make is they're like, oh, Ben, here's my new product. Here's 85 things to do right now. And then you're never going to hear from me for three more weeks until I try to sell you again, right? No matter what, you can't lose. That's a, that, I mean, a win. You can't, you can't win that at all. It's a lose-lose game, no matter which way you slice it. And so you have to think about this like it's a kindergartner or a breadcrumb with Jack and Jill. You're also creating and training your customer on how to be your customer in the best way possible. And so, yeah, there's, I do this. It's one of my favorite things to do. Customer journeys I obsess about. They're like my absolute like bread and butter. 
but I'll, I'll share what I do every time. Number one, number one is I always congratulate them because the worst thing that everybody does is somebody buys from you. And the first email is normally always about the person they bought from instead of the person who bought. If you are your hero, you will go out of business. If you make your customer your hero, you'll build a big ass business. And so email number one is always, congratulations, you've taken the hardest step and I'm so proud of you. I don't even talk about myself or my companies till you've known me for like six months. Normally people are asking, hey, what about why? I'm like, no, no, this is about you. This is about you, right? But then you go buy right now. Look at the next 20 products you buy online. I guarantee you 70% of them, the first email, this is why we do what we do. Let me talk about myself. Here, let me tell you how insecure I am and how I don't give a shit about you. And then you're like, are you really emailing me to tell me why you do what you do after I just gave you 300 freaking dollars? What? Like maybe ask me what I need. Maybe how can you support me? Maybe acknowledge me for spending money so that I want to tell my friends about you. And so no matter what, it always starts with a congratulations, a validation of the step that they took, a reminder of how awesome they are, how easy it's going to be. Like your job isn't to sell a product because your product is not complete until somebody has utilized it to achieve the goal that they set out to achieve. Not when their credit card went through the system. You can sell supplements all day, but if they sit on their container, in their container in your pantry, you've lost the game and you don't have a business, you have a liability. It's just a matter of time before it kicks you in the ass. That's the way that I think about it. Good question, good question. Okay, law number five, create two-way conversations, not one-way lectures. Businesses is not, are not built in dictatorships. You cannot automate, strategize, or tactically build and scale a business just like you cannot automate a romantic relationship or a friendship or a parenting relationship. You actually have to give a shit. But what that means is that you get a fast forward button to success. Because think about all the times that you've had a question with a company and you've sent them a message and you've heard back in an hour or two. Did that change your brand loyalty? Now think about all the times yes. that you've gone on Instagram and left a comment on an influencer's page or a brand's page and they never responded. Did you ever go back to that page? Nope. The person who responds wins the customer, not the person with the best product because people don't buy the best product. They buy the best relationship. And there is no better fast forward button to be in the hearts, minds, and souls of your customers than to have a two-way conversation. Social media, ask questions. Email, ask questions. Let them know that they can respond. Respond to their questions. Oh, somebody just placed an order and they bought 20 canisters. You better pick up the phone and call them and say, thank you. Watch what happens, right? Like you have to build a two-way relationship. Like, can you imagine going into a coffee shop or a restaurant and no one's speaking to you except to say, what's your order and drop your food off? You would never go back to that last restaurant again. Can you imagine walking to a coffee shop and them just staring at you? not prompting you nothing. And they just expect you to know. And you're like, order. They don't even respond. They stick out their hand. Get, you would never go back. We forget that humans, humans are on the other side of every single thing that we do, human beings. And so in order for somebody to make a decision, a buying decision, a purchasing decision, a loyalty decision, they have to feel safe in a relationship as a human, right? This is the difference between lifetime values of like $30 and $3,000. Because human beings psychologically only need three things when it comes to being able to do anything. They need to feel seen, heard, and respected. Not one of them, all of them, right? Because if you think about it and you look at, and I always tell people, look at your own purchasing behaviors. Look at your own consumption behaviors. There might have been times that you're like, oh, I need this product. And you're like, oh, oh, they're not responding. But like it solved the need and you got it. But you never talked about it. You never promoted it. And you never went back to them again outside of solving that need, right? And you were literally justifying the price, like, is this worth it? Can I do it, right? But then there's the other side where you've had such good experiences that you even forgot to see how much it cost. Because it wasn't about that. It was about the relationship. When price objections come up, you know, that the adage is, uh, you know, you haven't got them enrolled in your vision enough or they don't understand the value enough. It's really none of that. It's that they don't feel understood by you enough. Because at the end of the day, price isn't really an objection, but it's not about them not understanding the value because if they don't understand the value, that means you failed, not them, right? And so when you think about it, think about those times and those experiences. Think about the restaurants that you go to 
that when the bill comes, you don't even look. When you're looking at the menu, you don't even look. But then on the inverse, look at the ones you go to and you're like, oh, I'm looking, I'm looking. Ask yourself, why are you looking? What triggered you to look? What would have to happen for you not to look? And then when you answer those questions, apply them in your business and watch what happens. And so that's law number five. Law number five is two-way conversations, not one-way lectures. You want to unpack that one or are you good with that one? I just want to comment and say there is so much wisdom in what you just said. And it takes business beyond just buy my to let me build relationships and experiences and let me actually actually work with people and that is such a game changer like people are always people are always looking for the easy button to press that's the easy button that is the easy button take it seriously build relationships treat people like people yeah and even like even with drop shipping right and i've done this i've helped so many companies you might not own the product but you own the package the container and the journey from that point on put inserts in, put handwritten cards in, call your 3PO. Like there's so many things that you can do. Get their email, follow up, send handwritten cards in the mail, automate follow-ups, like surprise and delight. Like there are thousands of things that you can do all day, every day, but you have to think about every step of the journey and you have to be intentional. Just like if you want to convince your girlfriend or your boyfriend to get engaged to you and then marry you. It doesn't happen by accident. You're like, okay, what's their love language? What fills their tank? What makes them feel good? How do I respond when I piss them off? How do they like to feel understood? How do I ask them questions? And you start thinking about it. You're like, okay. And then, you know, us dudes are like, okay, give me a calendar. Okay, text my wife. Okay, send her a gift. Okay, her birthday's coming, right? But it works. It works because you're intentional, not because you have to document it. It's because you think through the entire process of what would be required for that person on the receiving end to feel amazing. And that's about making your customer the hero. And when you think about that, think about your products, your brands, the things that you do every day. Think about that product that no matter what, every time somebody asks you about it, you always talk about it positively. What was it that they did to you? How did they make you feel? What did they give you? What did they say? What did they make you think? What did they make you feel, right? We're simple creatures. Humans like to think that we're complicated, but we're really not. We're really not. We are about as simple as it comes. Because if you can get somebody to feel understood and to feel seen and respected, they are like eating out of the palm of your hands with love and they will say anything that you want because they feel their base Maslow hierarchy of needs are met. And so anything after that point is a bonus, right? But then when you flip it around, when a customer feels unheard, that's when you get nasty comments. It's not because they're mad at you. You got to remember if people were really mad at you, they wouldn't take the time to comment. When people leave you negative comments and negative reviews, they're screaming for help. Your response dictates the success of that interaction. I've turned more haters into mastermind members than I can even shake a stick at. Like they go from hating me to paying me like six figures a year. And I'm like, yep, that's it. And all because they weren't mad at me. I just triggered it. Right. And they like attack me. I'm like, Hey, can I call you? And they're like, what? Like, yeah. How do you feel? Tell me how you feel. Yeah. I know that makes sense. I feel that way too. I'm like, I kind of bother myself sometimes too. (laughs) <laughs> like, and so like you just got to remember there's humans they're moms daughters sisters brothers husbands friends like these are the people on the other side so then law number six ensure no one gets left behind this is from my military days right like and i mean that this means fulfilling on this means promises like my i hate i hate this right like hey sign up now and we're gonna send you this and then you never get it done and never send it like game over like gone right Hey, like when you buy your product, we're going to send you this game over, gone, right? Like, and this applies everywhere. Your marketing, your social media, your customer service, your emails, like you should always have the last touch point unless they basically have closed the loop. And this is one that not a lot of people think about because they focus so much on the front end that they forget that once those people buy, they fall into the black hole and that can feel like they got left behind. And so you have to make sure that people understand where they are why they're there. And my easiest way to do this is to create containers, right? You set expectations. If somebody buys your product and you're not set up to email them every day for 30 days, well, you better email them once and tell them you're not going to email them again for 30 days. Now you've set that expectation. You've set that container and they don't feel. The big key here is I don't care how you do it, what you think you're doing. If somebody doesn't feel it, you've lost. 
it's not about what you're doing. It's what they feel with what you're doing, right? And so if you come by for me and I'm like, hey, you buy my course, I'm not done with the marketing sequence yet. So you're not going to get any emails. You buy it and feel empty because you're like, wait, this is it? Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, hey, listen, Ben, I'm stoked to have you. You're going to be getting some emails soon. Here's number one, but I'm still finalizing this. So you're not going to hear from me about this for the next three weeks. If you need anything, hit reply. And all of a sudden, objection is pre-handled, but you also feel included and understood because you know what's happening. And humans hate ambiguity. We hate the unknown. And so if you leave any unknown anywhere, people will feel left behind, right? If you think they're not going to complain about the same thing every other customer does, you've lost your mind, right? I have a supplement company and we have a threatine pill. It's called, it's creatine, but it's a pill form. And it's massive. Like, I mean, like horse pill massive, right? You bet. Number one complaint. These pills are so big, so big, so big. Email number one, when you buy says, these pills are massive. If you get it and don't like it, we will refund your money and you can keep it. How many refunds do you think we get? Zero. The moment we take that out, three out of 10 ask for a refund because it's a shock. It was a let down expectation, right? And so when we handle it and we pre-handle it, they're like, oh my God, no, I, oh, thank you so much for telling me. I just got a pill cutter. I mixed it in with a smoothie, but I'm gonna go tell my friends about it. When you don't handle it and they feel that ambiguity or unknown, it's like, hey, give me my money back. Hey, don't ever buy that product. Those pills are massive. So I have a question here. There's an old adage, and maybe it's helpful, maybe it's not. I'd love to get your opinion on it. Yeah. Under promise and over deliver. I feel like this works into this law, but I'd love to get your take on it. I used to say it. Like I really used to say it, but I don't like saying it because I also, I also, I literally don't like under promising because I feel like it's manipulation. Right. And I'm like, how about just keep your freaking word? Like, that's it. Like at the end of the day, I'm like, keep your word. Right. And then, cause the thing that gets me about that is it, it's compensatory. Like it's compensatory, right? It's almost like, Oh, I'm going to under promise and over deliver. And I'm like, okay, cool. But if you're over delivering, why not just give that as the normal experience every day and make it the normal, right? And so it's that like reactive compensatory thing. It's almost like, and when I see it, right? Like when it happens to me, you can tell when somebody over delivers and they're insecure and you can tell when somebody over delivers and they're just confident and actually cares, right? One feels manipulative and one feels awesome, right? You like, you have those friends that like, no matter what, like they'll just send you a gift and you know they sent it because they cared and they thought about you and that was their habit. And then you have the friends that send it and you're like, all right, this is about to ask for something. What is it, right? And that's the thing that gets me. Make over delivering, just keeping your word and delivering on the value and then surprise and delight, right? And, and I think what I mean by that is like, I think what happens here is a company will be like, hey, you know, like, we're just going to send you this and, you know, our meals, right? And then they'll send like a 30 day journal. And then they're like, oh, look, and like, and you have this and you have this and you have this. And I'm like, are you hiding the product? Like what's going on here? Right. I'm like, why not just tell me that's what you want to give me and then give it to me and help me achieve it. But then when I'm going in, don't send me something so extravagant. Just check in with me. Send me a handwritten note, right? Like over deliver on the relationship, not so much on the product or the money or the experience, like just the relationship. And so I used to say it and that was something that like I, I went by, but then I also realized that I was also voluntarily withholding value to try to then do it on the back end to like position myself a certain way. And I was like, I'm still attracting the wrong customer. I'm still doing it for the wrong reasons. And so for me, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to email you every day. The end. Not like, oh, I'm going to send you this a week. I'm like, I tell you what I'm going to do. And the hardest part for that is when you say I'm going to under promise and over deliver, it gives you the ability to advocate your consistency and responsibility because you give yourself a back door, right? When I tell you, hey, Ben, I'm going to email you every day, the best of the best, whether I like it or not, I have to write you a damn email. And there's plenty of days I don't want to, right? But I could have been like, hey, a couple times a week, I'll send you my best tips. And you know, my lazy ass would skip four days and be like, hey, I got you and come up with some valid excuse, right? But that's not the way this game is played, right? It's like your car, like, oh, I don't want to turn on today. No, you expect your car to turn on every day, right? And so you have to play that way. So it's a good question, but I think it's more about like, make the normal, make the over delivery the normal 
and then use surprise and delight when it comes to things that move the needle, the relationship, the touch points, the value of like, hey, I care about you. Like, hey, Ben, like, I know it's going to sound weird. I just want to check in. It's the CEO of the company. You just bought my product. I would actually just love to know like how I can support you, right? Versus like, hey, Ben, thanks for buying my product. Let me give you a coupon to buy more of my and convince you that it's for you somehow. Big right. Difference. Yeah. And good Big question. Difference. Good question. And then law number seven is the easiest one. Uh, and it's the easiest one at the end. Uh, if it can be personal, it must be. Nobody buys from robots. Nobody buys from brands. People buy from people. You can tell me all day. Oh, they bought from a brand. They bought from a brand. No, they didn't. They bought from the last interaction they had, which was a human interaction. It could have been a comment, could have been a response, could have been an ad, could have been a copy, could have been video, could have been something. There's no robotics in human relationships and there's no robotics in building a business, none. I don't care what you do, how you do it. There's always a human being on both sides of that equation. And if it can be personal, it must be. And it doesn't mean like they have to know your dog's name and your kid's name and like your birthday. It means that it has to be predicated on something other than a transaction, right? Like add humanity to it, add empathy, add compassion, add understanding, add communication, right? Like. Oh, we don't email them. Let's email them. Oh, we don't text them. Let's text them. Like, oh, we got on a call and run a script. Well, let's ask them about their day first. Like make it human, make it personal, right? And like at the end of the day, in my opinion, that law directly coincides with law number one, which is everybody feels valuable whether they give you their credit card or not. Because normally most of the time that people don't feel good, it's because it felt transactional. And so the whole predication of me trademarking relationships beat algorithms and building a brand around it is that at the end of the day if every single person that you come into contact to feels seen heard and respected there is zero way to lose the game zero way and like i'll give you an example people laugh at me all the time like they're like you literally call people out in the industry you produce some crazy stuff and i've never seen a negative comment i was like yes because i'm also not being a dick and I'm also talking about myself. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, hey, Ben, when you screw up, I'm like, no, when I screwed up, which allows and invites other humans to self-identify, create their own dissonance and be like, oh, me too. I'm like, yeah, me too. I'm not RoboCop here. Like, I don't have like a checklist to do this perfectly. Like, I smash my face on the floor more than any of you could ever even imagine. Like, and it's also why I've succeeded. It's like, oh, black eye. Okay, I'm not dead. Black eye up. Oh, let's go again. Right? Like, broken nose up. Oh, that hurt. I'll move next time. Right? I'm like, go, go, go. But it's always just about moving forward, forgiving myself, getting up and doing it again, ensuring that at the core of everything I do, my customers, the customer experience, my team and the people always come first. There's no way to lose that game. And so if it can be personal, it must be. So I'm going to run over them real quick. And I'm just going to say the law. So law number one is everybody feels valued, whether they give you their credit card or not. Law number two is listen intently to what your customers want, not what you want. Law number three, learn or serve with every action you take. Law number four, build long-term relationships, not one-night stands. Law number five, create two-way conversations, not one-way lectures. Law number six, ensure no one gets left behind. And law number seven, if it can be personal, it must be. Ladies <sighs> and gentlemen, you've, you've heard it here, and we've made history. And George, I just want to thank you so much for sharing – all seven of the laws out in, out in public and going into them and diving in and dude, massive, massive, uh, thank you for me. Yeah, of course. And a massive amount of appreciation you rock. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really can't thank you enough for coming on the show today. Yeah. And for all of you too, I'm going to give you a tip in life, celebrate every win. I'm going to pen drop right now. Cause like, I feel like we just crushed this episode and you listen and crushed it as well. But celebrate, like get happy, get joyful, like go forward, like go do something with these things and be stoked because I, I just want to say this because this is going to come up and you're going to be like, how's he reading my mind? There's some of you that are going to be like, oh my God, I'm not doing any of this or there's no way I can do all of this or blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear it. Shut up. Just shut up, right? Turn the chatter off because all you're doing is preventing yourself from doing it. That's it. And I tell everybody, pick one thing every day. And like my goal every day, Ben, is to positively impact one life, not a hundred, not a thousand. Like I might get a hundred thousand downloads. I might have a video go by. I don't give a I really don't. Like all that gets me out of bed is I'm like, okay, my day is one. If I helped one person today, if I made one person feel better, if I closed one hole in the bucket, 
And that's what it is, right? And so think about some of those laws and think about your business. You're like, oh, what if I add an email? What if I just respond to a question differently today? What if I respond to a customer service email differently? What if I took these and applied it to my manufacturer or the companies that I'm working with or my 3PL? Like, I wonder what would happen to my business then. I wonder if they'd prioritize my shipments. I wonder if I get better treatment. I wonder if my things would go out faster. Like these apply everywhere. And the goal is when you feel it, you identify it, you pick one, you put it into practice, then you pick another one, you put it into practice. And just like anything, every day we're positively impacting our relationships with ourselves, our customers, and our team. And as long as you're doing that and you're growing forward and you're leaning forward and you're failing forward and stepping forward and you're like, oh, I can do better, I can do better, I can do better, your success is inevitable. Your success is inevitable. And so that would be my closing words for everybody. And remember that relationships always beat algorithms. Ladies and gentlemen, I would highly encourage you to go back through this episode, write down all seven of the laws and tape it to your mirror in the bathroom. So every time you wake up to brush your teeth in the morning, hopefully you're doing that. It's good for dental hygiene. You read those laws, you're, you're implementing that in your life and you're just getting so focused on them. You can't help but make better business decisions, make better relationship decisions and really use that to change your life. Um, George, I want to thank you again. I know we talked about giving a super special extra secret gift to the people. Would you, uh, tell us a little bit about it, please? Yeah, of course. Of course. I would love to. So here's what we did. We put this together. I know that I'm like a fire hose, right? So I hope you're drowning right now and drowning in value, which is what you're supposed to be. But we put together uh, a seven day lighthouse course and you'll understand the lighthouse when you come in. So it basically teaches you this on how to apply it to your business, how to determine what your why is, what your how is, what your, how, what your what is, who your customers are, their empathetic states, how to be into their hearts and minds, how to create content from that. We put all of that together for free in a seven day course. You'll see how I email you, you'll be able to see what we do, and then you can take all of these laws and apply it into your business. And so Ben's gonna give you the link. Um, mindofgeorge.com is my website. It's linked there, but Ben will give you the direct link. It's right there on the homepage. We just added it today. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and review it too, because I give away all my quote unquote secrets that don't exist because they're not secrets if you tell people, but I'll help you with anything you need in your business. Amazing. And for that link, make sure to go on video in the description below and for the podcast in the show notes. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you're drowning from value, think about it logically. You're out in the, you're out in the ocean, you're drowning from value. What do you look for? The lighthouse. This is Whoa. your lighthouse. This is the way you can change your life. George, thank you very much. You're the freaking man. I'm so appreciative for you. Um, you're the best ladies and gentlemen. I'm appreciative of you too. Thank you for listening and I will see you on the next episode. Hello again, Ecom Masters. Mike was here again with a big thank you for sticking with us to the end of this episode. I know how valuable your time is and I want to congratulate you for setting yourself apart from the pack by investing your attention into this podcast. Now make sure to maximize this time by taking notes while it's still fresh, listening to the episode multiple times if you need to and implementing what you have learned right away into your own business. Now, if you're looking for a little bit more training and want to learn the step-by-step -step methodology that you need to build the e-com business of your dreams, I want you to join me for an exclusive invite only training that I'm only giving specifically for podcast listeners. Now in it, we're going to share the secrets of what we've used to scale Dropify into the 2019 5,000 number 55 fastest growing company in America. You will not find this information anywhere else guaranteed to get immediate 100% free access. All you got to do is go to dropify.com forward slash podcast dash special or just click the link below and in the show notes and I will see you on the other side.